Hey, what's happening, friends? So if you've wanted to know how to make an all grain beer and you've been scouring YouTube to try to figure out what's the easiest, quickest, best way to do all grain brewing, well, you found the right video. I have also been in your shoes and I have not found a quick and dirty way to make all grain beer. What you get into is a bunch of blah, 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 technical jargon. You lose yourself because everything is so hard to understand. That, I wanna stop that with this video. Today, this is the down and dirty, how to make an all grain brew. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take you step by step. We are going to brew a simple beer today, a German Pils or Pilsner for Oktoberfest. And basically this has a pretty simple recipe. We are doing a 10 gallon batch because we're using kegs, okay? And this is stuff that I've made in my garage. So it's not out of the ordinary for you to do it and a little help from our friends at Amazon. This re recipe calls for 18 pounds of grain uh, and then two ounces of hops for our boil that makes the hoppy bitter flavor, two ounces for our aroma hops, which makes it smell like beer, and of course yeast, which makes our friends Al and Cajal show up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through this step by step again, show you quick, dirty, easy, and you'll be making beer in no time. So the first thing you need to do is get your grain bill in order. So this sheet calls for 18 pounds, three ounces of grain. So I'm gonna grind that right now. Oh, yeah, we'll be cleaning this up before Michelle gets home. Once you have your grain bill all measured out and weighed out, then we gotta run it through the grinder. I like to use this three row grinder. It's super easy. There's tons of different options for this though. Bingo. So what you wanna check for when you're doing this is that the holes are cracked open, but the grain itself is actually still in pieces. You don't want dust. Although there is a little dust in here, but you want everything kind of cracked open and pulverized. Now that we've got our grain all mashed up, we're gonna put it right in our mash tun. This is what we basically cook the dough in, as they say. All right, I'm gonna set the, my mash out temperature now, which again, your recipe is gonna ask you for at 168 degrees. This is the temperature I want this water to be when I put it in the grains. So now our temperature is up to our mash temperature. I'm using an electric brewery, but if you're at home and you're doing this with a propane burner, just trying to get started, no worries. Just use a temperature probe to watch the temperatures. You'll be fine. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull hot water out of this boil kettle and we're gonna sparge the grains. We're gonna basically just sprinkle hot water over the grains and this is an insulated keg. So, and then we're gonna hold that temperature for as long as we can. This recipe calls for 60 minutes. We have a trick up our sleeve because we know that this is gonna to start to cool down as soon as we put it in there. So we have a way of recirculating with a heating element to keep the temperature maintained. But if you don't have that, you'll see guys using igloo coolers. That's essentially what this is. We're just putting something in there, keeping it hot for a while so the sugars can be extracted from the grains. And then we're gonna draft that sweet wort, that liquid, right out of here. See you in a minute. Pro tip, barbecue gloves, they make for barbecuing. You can use these for the same thing when you're brewing. All of these fittings get super hot, so you gotta be careful. Now that I've got this glove stuck on my hand. <laughs> now that I've got the water, hot water, 168 degrees on all that grain, I'm gonna give it a stir. This is just like you're making oatmeal. Time to make the oatmeal. Time to make the donuts. Time to eat the donuts. <laughs> So what we're doing right now is we are circulating this hot wort liquid and basically rinsing the grain bed and reinfusing it back in. That's why they call this type of system a rims system. Now it's a little fancy. Again, if you just had an igloo cooler and every 20 minutes you, you stirred it and kept the lid on it, you wouldn't lose much heat and you pretty much end up with a, a decent deal. 
But something like this allows me to do what we call step mashing, which is if I want to mash in at a certain temperature and then later on change it, it adds a different complexity based on different grains. We're using a two row, so it's not really necessary to change temperatures. This is a single infusion style setup, but because we're recirculating this, we're maintaining the temperature. So again, down and dirty, all we're doing is keeping this liquid hot and we're running it through a heating element right here. That's it. We're about halfway through our mash system. Once we're done with the 60 minutes, I'll see ya. Okay, so we've steeped the grains in our mash tun for 60 minutes. Again, this could be your igloo cooler. And once this grain has converted and we pulled all the sugar out of the grain, we've got a sweet, sticky liquid. We're then gonna put it into our boil kettle. Our boil kettle's right here. And we have in this recipe, approximately 13 and a half gallons prior to boil. So you're gonna lose some water during the boiling process. And that's okay, we, we understand that. So we're gonna allow this to come to a boil. And once this gets boiled, we're gonna add the hops. Now that the wort is very, very close to boiling, I am actually going to get my hops ready. So I've got a package of hops. I buy them in bulk, they're a little cheaper. And I got a scale. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure those out. This recipe calls for 1.98 ounces of Tetneg, which are those uh, German style Pilsner hops, which we have a bag of them right here. Now, the first set of hops that you add, it, as you know, that is for the bittering flavor. That is what you taste in the beer. So the more hops you add at this stage, the more bitter the beer will be. Also, the longer you boil the hops, the more bitter the boil will be. Try saving that five times. My fast. God, are you so still So what we're gonna talking? do is I got my scale. We're gonna load this up. Ah, smells delightful. And we're gonna add our two ounces of hops. There we go, two ounces. Now we're gonna add them into the boil. And I'm using a thing they call a hop spider. It's just a can that sits in the, the boil kettle. That keeps all those hot particles from getting into everything. You can pitch them right in there and just filter it later, but it's a pain. It's so much easier to do it this way. It's worth noting that cleanliness when making beer is next to godliness, as they say. Everything that touches the wort must be sanitized. It can't just be rinsed off with water. So oftentimes I keep a bottle of this wonderful chemical called Star Sand Handy and I just spray things that are gonna to be touching the beer. The stuff is wonderful and it, if you wreck your batch of beer because you forgot to sanitize something, that's a lot of money and time down the drain. Shut up and take my money. So after you add the hops, you really gotta watch that foam because sometimes that can be just the catalyst it needs to just take off. I've made such a mess doing that before. Just ask my wife when I used to do this on the stove. No. It's partially the reason why I got permission to build this wonderful brewery. Okay, now the hops are in there. We gotta wait 60 minutes. We're gonna keep a close eye on this to make sure it doesn't overboil. But this is a great time to relax and have a beer. 50 minutes have gone by. We have a total time of 60 minutes on the boil. So now we're gonna add our aroma hops. This is the hops again that give you that smell of beer, that nice hoppy smell. And this is also calling for two ounces of hops, 10 minutes until the boil ends. And just give it a little quick stir. Steamy and dreamy. See you in 10 minutes. While the boil is almost done, I'm actually gonna get my yeast going. Now, I like these starter packs. They work pretty good. I have a really, really hard time getting them to take off. So what I like to do is I take the yeast and I put it right in here with the nutrient that's with it and give her a spin to get her kicked off a little bit faster. Also, you should know that the uh, dry yeast also can be started in one of these magnetic stirs. You can get these on Amazon for like $30. They're totally worth their weight in gold. Okay, our boil's done. I'm gonna shut the controller off. 
and now we're gonna take the hops out and we're gonna let this wort start to get cool. While our yeast is getting pitched, we're gonna load it into our conical fermenter. So we are now transferring the wort through the pump all the way up into our conical fermenter, which we've painstakingly sanitized. My man! You can see it's going in. Now, if you're doing this on the cheap, again, there's a lot of different ways to get this done. You could easily use a conical fermenter or even a brew bucket. But if you have the money for a conical, man, oh man, are these things awesome. Once we get this all transferred, then we're gonna run a cooling cycle on it and get it down to temperature so we can pitch that yeast, boy. So now I've got the wort in the conical. We're now cooling down the wort. We put it in, it was 183, it's now 172. So this coil that's inside this cools it down really well. If you're going low tech and you're doing a, this in a pot, you can always put the pot in your sink and uh, a, ba a bath of ice around it will work. What I did was I took one of these deals that you use in the hospital to cool your knee or your hip replacement down with, and I cut the piece off and put the quick connects, and it goes to a cooler, and the cooler is in the sink, and it's got a trickle of water going through it. And what that does is it allows the well water, which is really cold up here in northern Maine, to cool it down. Uh, probably take about an hour to get this cold enough to pitch the yeast. You don't want to pitch the yeast this strain in anything hotter than 70 degrees because it'll kill it. Fatality. So, just tightening my cap back up here. I just put the yeast in. So, you, we were waiting until the temperature got below 70 degrees because that's the temperature the yeast wants to live at. So we're at 69 degrees and we put the, uh, the yeast in. It's gonna do its job. We got our blow off tube and we've got the valve open. The blow off or airlock is going into a bottle of star sand mixed up just in case we get some sort of siphonage action but these blow off canes work pretty good it's not very likely that that will happen uh, once the fermentation kicks off at the very end part of it i'm not going to show it in this video but i would end up using the spunding valve which is an adjustable airlock i basically would adjust that for whatever psi that i want to use it for but i'm not going to do it here this is just a, a down and dirty brew like i said if, again, you don't have a conical fermenter, you'd be doing this in a bucket or perhaps even in a carboy with an airlock on it. And then uh, after, you know, two to three days of primary fermentation, you can send it to a secondary fermenter uh, for clarification purposes. And then after about, I don't know, two, three weeks or so, you'd be good to go. What I'm going to end up doing with this deal, though, is I'm going to end up letting it go for a little bit and then dumping the trube, as they say, as you can see right there. Uh, I can capture the yeast that I put in there after it's done doing its jobs. And then uh, I can cold crash it. And cold crashing is another term they use where you basically bring the temperature of the wort down rapidly for the last tail bit of the yeast activity. And what that does is it uh, basically clarifies the beer really well. Although with the trube dumping, it, it, it's a big clarification anyway. So you know, I don't really know if it's necessary or not. Anyways, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please comment, like, or subscribe. Let me know what you would like me to talk about. If there's a video that you'd like as far as how to do one thing or another, I would greatly appreciate that idea, and I'll be glad to put it to film. Thanks again, and be safe out there.